धारा तू गंगा की मौज में जमुना का धारा हो रहेगा मिलन ये हमारा हो हमारा तुम्हारा रहेगा मिलन ये हमारा तुम्हारा आई नाउ साइलेंट एंड ड्राई आई एम स्टिल अराउंड हियर समवेयर आई एम नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज्ड एज अ रिवर People know me as a nala, open drain. They hold their breath as they pass by. Where am I? Please give me back my identity. It is a silent cry that we tend to ignore. With determination, we can get our environment back for the present and future generation, and eventual tiger rehabilitation. We wish to present a big pilot project. for the mumbai environment that can be approached and worked at different levels we want to rehabilitate the four mumbai rivers of dahisar pohisar oshivra and mithi and their connection interaction and eventual rehabilitation with the mangroves at mahim lokhandwala charkop and gorai this can then also be the solution to give are back to sanjay gandhi national park for our big cats in this way we can expand the lungs of the city you may be surprised to learn that tigers did exist in mumbai until the last tiger was shot in 1929 near vihar lake we present as one example a river in dire need of rehabilitation Nestled in the hilly region of Sanjay Gandhi National Park in Borivali in Mumbai having elevations between 30 meters and 480 meters is the source of the approximately 12 km long Dahisar River Starting at the Gaumuk the Dahisar River follows a path through the park The river flows by the 2400 years old Kaneri caves sculpted out of the rocky cliffs that lie within the park. Here is the first dam near the base of the Kaneri caves. We need more such dams to retain water round the year. Chunapada village near the river is only 5 kilometers away from Borivali station. However, there is no light. no public transport children have to travel more than 10 kilometers to reach school there is a dam situated near the village the lush greenery is due to its proximity to the river This is Tungi Pada village where the hand pump has not functioned for the past 8 to 10 months forcing the villagers including children to walk at least a kilometer and more to fetch water The river continues on its journey A serene scene of a lotus pond meets the eye Where water is retained you have a beautiful stretch of green with foliage for visitors to enjoy the breath of fresh air generating both ecology and economy This is the point where the river leaves the forest behind to enter the city and meet the sea We come across a dobi ghat where soiled clothes from hospitals hotels and school hostels are washed daily leaving behind dirty water with chemicals NH8 one of the major national highways where the river crosses is further polluted by a tabela buffalo shed an illegal activity as per local law 
Here is the smashan, the final journey where the last rites are held and carried away by the river. This too is not respected. This is the western railway track over which is the bridge connecting Dahisar East to its west side. A couple of residents fondly recall earlier days. When we came here to stay in 1957, there were only small houses. A few bungalows away was a river. The area is known as Dolat Nagar where there is a river flows. I, as a child, along with other children in those days, learned swimming in this very river. In fact, the river was so clean, which was flowing round the year. After the settlement of Premji Nagar, the course of the river changed. It was not so earlier. It was good to stay by the river and was beautiful and scenic. It is not so now. The condition of the river now has become so pathetic. We hope sincerely that it will see its past glory again. The once beautiful bank of the river is now reduced to a gutter. The river known as Mata in Hindu religion is clearly at the mercy of factories and individuals who throw their waste into its waters. This is clearly the consequence of an unplanned development of the city along with population explosion. Just imagine a beautiful clean river with a city line on either side of the bank. This can be achieved by just putting a stop to the pollution. The birds and fish would then make a comeback. Pingu, fever, you know, you heard malaria. about it. virus, malaria, and what not. All this is because we are breathing in and out, in and out. When I come this way, I, when I feel bad when people walk here, I could not. I just put my tidy like this. All rivers connect to the four mangroves at Mahim, Lokandwala, Charkop, and Gorai. A strip of green that separates much of Mumbai's coastline from the Arabian Sea is almost submerged at high tide. As the sea retreats, this strip is seen as clumps of densely packed trees interspersed with narrow creeks. According to Debi Goenka, a Mumbai-based environmentalist, at present, all that remains is around 35 to 45 square kilometers of mangrove forest after almost 70% destroyed in land reclamation projects.
Mangroves are various types of medium-height trees and shrubs that grow in saline coastal sediment habitats. These mangrove forests are home to several species of plants, birds, animals and marine life. Mangroves act as a natural barrier against floods, protect the shoreline from soil erosion and can absorb almost eight times more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than any other ecosystem. The saline conditions tolerated by various mangrove species are known to range from brackish water through pure seawater to water concentrated by evaporation to over twice the salinity of ocean seawater. The unique ecosystem found in the intricate mesh of mangrove roots offers a quiet marine region for young organisms. Unfortunately, garbage has been dumped into these intertidal areas, upsetting the salinity of the seawater and choking off mangrove tree roots. The dumping is a technique to illegally reclaim the land and subsequently build on it once the trees have been destroyed. This concrete jungle was once a mangrove paradise. The beautiful mangrove forest is like the Sundarbans. Only missing is the roar of the tiger. We can still save what remains of nature's bounty. Flowing through this mangrove forest, each river finally meets the Arabian Sea. Ultimately, all solid and liquid waste is visible on our beaches, destroying our coastal line and affecting the fishermen and their livelihood. We need to work on the complete ecosystem of our city, from Gaumuk in the Sanjay Gandhi National Park and Are to the river, from the river to the mangroves that finally lead to the Arabian Sea. We can then see a palm-fronted, beautiful beach. Here are just three striking examples to support and explain our aim. Shuzhou Creek in Shanghai was known as one of the bodies with the most contaminated water. The creek had a historical importance as a maritime trade route from early 1600s. But since the 1920s, the population explosion in the region, wastewater and industrialization killed most of the aquatic plant species, the only source of industrial water and irrigation in Shanghai. The poor quality of the creek also threatened the health and living conditions of residents living in the area. The Shanghai Suzu River Rehabilitation was planned to see the body of water become the channel of urban renewal and economic growth and the restoration of natural ecology and wildlife habitat. The River Thames was a biologically dead river in the 1950s and is today a thriving waterway. It is now the cleanest metropolitan river in Europe. As the river gets cleaner, more species of fish and river life return to the Thames. The project is essentially about how the health of humans is intrinsically linked to the health of the ecology as a whole. Tighter regulations of polluting industries and interaction with farmers, businesses and water companies to reduce pollution and improve water quality have all helped to make the Thames a living river once again. In our own country, we have the Sabarmati Riverfront Development Project an environmental improvement, social uplift and urban rejuvenation project to renew Ahmedabad. The Sabarmati is a 370 km long, once perennial river 
originating from the Aravalli Hills near Udaipur in Rajasthan that meets the Arabian Sea in the Gulf of Kambat. The project was designed to provide Ahmedabad with 11 and a half kilometer long pedestrian promenades at the water's edge along both the banks of the river. In addition to the promenades, many new parks and gardens are envisioned on the reclaimed land. Build more, achieve higher construction turnover for monetary gains, but definitely not at the cost of social and environmental interest. The destruction of natural environmental condition has turned these areas into a city's backyard, both physically and figuratively. Eco-sensitive areas are considered as dumping grounds for waste disposal and illegal land fillings in the pretext of growing urbanization and city expansion programs. Sustainable ecology and environment prepared with people's participation needs to be the essential feature of our city's development plan. Here is the voice of the common man and his concerns. Is it loud enough to make a difference? यह चित्रपटा की शूटी यह नदी किनारे झाली होती। यह पानी नेशनल पार्क पर उन्हें इसे दोंगरातु नहीं इसे। पन देखने सोचा पूरी नदियाँ भी छुट्टे होते। कहीं एक पैसा पहले होता था तो दिसाई का सब पढ़ लेना है मैं तो कहीं भांडी में आऊँगा सहेला कपड़े दो हेला पना नहीं थी अरे तेजन अंतर है तो कमीत कमी 40 वर्ष या अंतर ही भगवती अस्पताल अरे तो किसने लगा तो तबीला तेजन लेते सेन ऐसा मत गाते हैं अरे तेजन मुझे तो पानी हस्ते हस्ते गानों में लगने अरे जितने लुई चर जो जितने पानी खड़ा होता दोनों बाल खड़ा हो दे तेजन मुझे बारह महीने पानी ऐसा थे अरे जितने डैम होता तेजन मुझे अरे गांव पर तेज़ में नंतर जास्ता तो वाड़त गिरी अरे इतने से पानी दूषित हुआ तो कोई विचारस नहीं केला मानसा चल प्रकृति तो काय पढ़ना होते हैं ऐसे बोले कोई चौकसी नहीं केली अरे ही गांव पर ते कोशिश वोशिश वाड़त गिरी नाशिक ला जो आता हमी केलो तो ना नाशिक ला जो आदि खूब पानी खराब तो सो हुशत ही थे, ना हुशत का तो नहीं, हाँ, हुशत थे, पर संकट का बाबा होना रहे, होना रहे, मैं कदी होना रहे, हाँ। Authorities, please do not consider me as a huge burden on the development agenda. Progress, but in the process, do not forget me and my fellow rivers. Help me and yourself. 